Well, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Stu, AG6AG, and I'm here to do a quick tutorial on how to get the RTL SDR dongle set up. Uh, first thing, uh, let's take a look. This is the RTL SDR dongle. This is version 3. This is the one that I recommend. This is about oh, $18 to $20 typically on Amazon. Uh, and that's uh, with Prime. That's delivered. So this would be the unit uh, that I find is easiest because it already has the uh, direct sampling uh, hack done to it from the factory. Anyway, you'll get this in the mail. This is all that comes. Uh, and uh, let's go through the installation really quick. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop up to the internet. And I am going to search for SDR, or excuse me, RTL SDR. And I'll come up to the RTL, the very top one in my case, is the uh, Software Defined Radio, the RTLSDR.com site. I'm going to go ahead and click on Software and Supported Software. And there's a couple different things that I'm going to need to download. Um, by the way, this is just an advertisement. Stay, as, uh, as always, stay away from any advertisements that run in your way. So the SDR Sharp is very popular. However, it doesn't interface with radios. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to install the HD SDR software. Now, um, it has a official installation instructions manual and that's where we want to go. And this happens to be a PDF. Uh, really, the reason that I'm going here is I want to pop up here and I want to install the Zadig uh, installer software. Uh, this is actually designed to replace the uh, USB driver for the RTL SDR with one that actually works uh, with the software and with the dongles the way we want to use it. So we're going to download the latest version and that's going to end up in our download. We're not going to run that yet. All right. But we're going to go back here to our PDF and we're going to go down and we're going to download the latest installer and we're also going to download the RDL um, DLL that will be used as the driver. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll grab this. That is the HD SDR install. And then we'll grab this. Now, this is going to grumble a little bit because it is a DLL. Uh, you want to keep it. Uh, it's basically grumbling because it is a link library and it could be used a feroniously, let's just say, for bad guys. So, uh, again, if you've got any problems with installing this stuff or whatever, I recommend that you read through the documentation. But if you want to run uh, the RTL SDR dongle, you're going to need to use uh, these drivers. Anyway, uh, that gets us to that point. We have our stuff downloaded. Now we're going to go through the install process. Now, uh, I recommend that you read through the PDF that we were just in uh, to get a general idea of what you're doing uh, and make sure there aren't any individual issues or other things that may be of concern while we're doing this. Uh, we are now going to take the RTL dongle and I'm going to plug it into a USB port on this laptop. And you see that it's setting up a device. Now it's going to set the device up with the driver that's available for Windows. However, that's the wrong driver. Um, that is not going to work with the software installing. So we're going to have to uh, run the uh, Zadig software and we're going to go ahead and say run. And there we go. All right. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go under options. We're going to list all devices. 
And what we're looking for is either bulk interface one or possibly uh, something else in here, but it looks like bulk interface uh, zero will be the one that we need. And what we're going to do, you see that the current driver that it has, we're going to change it to the Win USB driver. We're going to go ahead and replace the driver. And the driver was successfully installed. So that is now the current driver. Uh, we can also, by the way, uh, select the bulk device 2. Oh, nope. We want bulk in device 1. And yeah, let's see if it lets us keep that. And then we are going to go ahead and also replace the driver for that. All right. There we go. So that's all taken care of. All right. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to unplug the RTL SDR. And I'm going to plug it back in. Like so. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run the HD SDR installer. And again, it wants to know if I want to run it, and I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask for uh, my uh, approval, and then I'm going to accept their agreement. And I'm just going to take the defaults here, and I want to create a uh, shortcut on the desktop. And there we go. And we're not going to launch the program yet, okay? And you'll see in a minute why. Now, we need to do another thing here. Remember that DLL? We're going to go ahead and copy it, right? And we are going to go down to our PC. And remember, we installed this in here. And we need to actually put it in the program file. So again, what I did is I went to this PC, I selected my C drive, I selected the program files x86 where we defaulted the install to, and here's the HD SDR. This is the program directory itself. I'm going to right hand mouse click and say paste. It's going to ask if I want to continue, and there we go. So we now have that in the directory. Okay, so at this point, we have installed the software. And we can go ahead, let's launch it. And there we are. We have it up and working. So uh, we can verify that really quick by clicking here, and we can see that we actually are connected to the RTL, and we can make changes. All right, so we're going to take a break now. I'm going to uh, be back in just a second because I need to hook an antenna to this in order to continue farther. All right, well, remember when I just said antenna? This is what we put up to go ahead and calibrate and demonstrate. This is a 20-meter uh, dipole that is a loaded dipole. In other words, there's uh, lots of windings in it to get it short so we can do 20 meters. And it's sitting right at about 18 feet right now. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go on in now and check everything out. All right, so just to give you a general idea, we're gonna use this antenna tuner to try to get the best signal possible because let's face it, we got a compromised antenna in the air. We've got really lousy propagation right now, so uh, this is just audio tuned or tuned for best reception. And let's go ahead and move on over to the computer. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch HDSDR. Oh boy, let's turn that volume down. There we go. Um, first things first, let's go ahead and full screen this little darling. Make it a little easier uh, on the eyes. There we go. And let's go ahead and enable direct um, sampling mode. Now we're going to do that by going over here to EXTIO, this blue box here, uh, and we're going to pull up the DLL settings box, and we see over here HF direct sampling. We're going to go on this pull down and we're going to select Q output, 
and we're also going to turn on down here in the bottom RTL auto gain control. We can go ahead and shut that for now. Now what we need to do is we need to calibrate this. They're all pretty close, but if you're like me, you want it pretty much rock on. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to AM mode. I'm going to go over here to my local oscillator. I'm going to click on it here. See where it says LOA? I'm just going to click on it there. It's going to pull up an entry window. And I am going to, let's see, I want to put the local oscillator slightly off the frequency I want to tune to because I'm going to get noise out of the local oscillator. Um, that will eventually correct itself after we get a bunch of stuff warmed up and stuff like that. But for right now, let's go ahead and work on that basis. So I'm going to go ahead and rather than set it to 15 megahertz to get the clock signal, I'm going to send it to 14. Oh, let's do 990. All right. We're just going to go uh, uh, 10 uh, kilohertz off of, uh, off of our target. Now, let's go ahead and adjust our tuner, and we can do that with the mouse. I'm just going to click here on 15, and I need to go up just a little. There we go. Oh, back a little. Actually, let me zoom this in. I am going to zoom this in to where I can get right on 15, like that. There we go. All right. So... I'm on 15. I've set direct sampling mode. Uh, I'm slightly offset. You see this red line here is an interference line that I'm getting, uh, and that's from the oscillator itself. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to adjust out uh, the zoom just a little farther, right, so I get a little bit better view. And I'm going to go over here, and I am going to go ahead and set the scaling up to where uh, if uh, there's a, a smaller scale so I can see more. And I'll probably crank this down just a little bit, right? My zero, there we go, my lower floor. All right, that looks actually pretty good. Uh, I can also, if I want, right, I can basically select, uh, select this and remove my averaging. We'll turn averaging off there. Beautiful. All right, so I'm starting to see something there. Let's turn our volume up and see what we have. So I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. There's the tone time. All right. So let's back our volume back down so we know that we're really close. Let's zoom in a little farther and see if we're off really at all. And it looks like, well, we're off a little. And you probably can't see it on this camera angle. So let me move the camera up so you can see. Very slight, but we are off. Okay, so where do we fix that? Well, we're going to go back over to um, our extended IO setup, EXT IO, and we're going to go to our frequency correction and we're going to watch this and that's just a little hot so I am going to crank it down just a little bit. We're going to watch this and I am going to click it. Oh, see it moved a little? That's actually pretty good and that's a little too far. So I think right there is perfect. It was only one off. That's really good. All right. So we've got that set. Let's see if I can get this camera repositioned. Okay. All right. So we got that set. We can go ahead and close that. Now we should be able to, of course, hear the, hear the tones. So now we're going to go down here, we're going to zoom this just a little bit down at the bottom because I want to see, I want to see there should be an audio tone that comes up right here at a thousand hertz. Slightly off. I might not have this set up right. 
But we're good on here, so I'm good with that. So I'm going to zoom back. And let's get back on a uh, frequency that actually is going to work for us. I'm actually going to use the mouse here, and I'm going to adjust this down to 14,490, which puts me at 14,500. And let's switch to upper sideband. We're now on 20 meters. And I am going to zoom back in a little bit right here to put ourselves to where we're at 14. Let's see. Come on. Uh, there we go. 14. I want to go to 14,350. So. Oh, wait. I need to go a little lower. That's what my problem is. Let's go, let's go all the way down to, okay, let's go all the way to 240. There we go. That's better. Silly me. Now we'll adjust this back out. I want to get it so up at the top side, I'm at 14, 350. Where is it? There it is. All right. So that's pretty much set up now, and that actually looks pretty good. Let me turn that volume down. Boy, that's annoying. All right. Now, um, I am going to go over, and I had tuned it so it would work on work better at 15. Let me put the tuner in manual here because the uh, antenna actually is tuned for these frequencies. Let me spread out my audio waterfall a little bit. There we go. All right. Uh, the rest of this actually looks pretty good. Uh, speed looks good. I could crank the speed up a little more. I like it a little faster. Uh, man, is it quiet out there. Uh, but as it looks, things look pretty good. Um, I can adjust the spectrum out. Uh, a little bit. This is actually uh, to get a little bit better idea what's going on. Plus I can adjust the waterfall out to be a little more sensitive. There we go. Okay, so I'm not really seeing a lot. Well, let's see. Anything out there? Yeah, I would figure there'd be nothing on the uh, on the bands when I did this. But there's a little there. Barely hear it pretty weak, but it's something, so we know it's working, um, and we can go and play with all sorts of other fun stuff in here if we want to, of course, uh, we can adjust our auto gain threshold up or bring it down, right, whatever we're looking at doing, we can also turn around, and if we want to, we can go in here and shut off our auto gain. Down here, this gives us a bit more control over what we're doing. Right? So, there we go. And, of course, we can doctor with our waterfall now. Get it back to where we want it. That's actually looking pretty good. All right. So let's see. We'll turn this down. A few more settings that I wanted to let you know about. Um, of course, you've got some filters, some other stuff here. Um, but under options, you are going to want to go to calibration. And you're wanna going to want to go to DC removal here. And select IIR high bypass auto. You, of course, can select contrast. Uh, as well. I like the auto because I work less when I'm doing that. We don't really have an issue with channel calibration. Uh, we don't need to put in phase or delays. 
Um, right now, our S meter, uh, we don't have a comparison, so we're going to run with where it's set. Um, and of course, this we're just going to leave alone, right? I'll say OK. And I think that's it. That gives us something general to play with. Um, other things you may want to do, I'll just bring this up really quick. Under miscellaneous options, um, you can t say tune fixed to LO, but what you really want to do here is show UTC time over on the side, right? So you can see what time these things came in. Uh, then also, we can go down here to mouse wheel and we want it to be mode tuned. So when we spin the wheel, it tunes it. Did we find something there? Maybe. As time goes on, the band goes in and out. So let's see what this is. Boy, and I don't have a transmitter set up. That's a shame. All right, so let's see here. Uh, back to our options. Go back to our mouse wheel. Uh, and our step, I like to have my step at about 50 kilohertz. So when I'm spinning the mouse wheel, it's moving at about 50 kilohertz. But that's just me. You can set it to whatever you want. You can see here also that we're seeing some of the audio pattern going on and what's actually going on. This is really great if you're trying to isolate where noise is to set a filter. So it works really well. Anyway, um, this is actually looking pretty good. All right, and we'll set our AGC to fast. And I think we're all set. All right, so I hope you like the demonstration, and I hope it worked well for you. Um, fairly fast tutorial on how to set this up. Have fun with it. Uh, in the future, I'm going to try to post something on how you can actually use this in conjunction with your radio and control your radio by uh, clicking on locations like this and changing the actual radio frequency uh, and using this as a full-fledged pan adapter for your HF rig. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for the video. Any questions or comments, please send me an email at stu, that's Sierra Tango Uniform, at ag6ag.org. Thanks for watching.